hello lovely people, all of a sudden I had the urge to show you my lipstick collection. Now this is probably not going to be much of a declutter because in, if I'm being honest, a couple of months ago, just in the spur of a moment, I went through all of my lipsticks and I decluttered a bunch of them, especially colors that were way too similar or colors that I was no longer really attracted to or would ever wear, really dark, dark lipsticks that I never wear anymore and like weird colors. I got rid of most of my liquid lipsticks. I've kept only a handful so this is not going to be much of a declutter it's mostly going to be just showing you my collection of lipsticks so without further ado because this is going to otherwise take forever let's just get started this little compartment here holds a part of my lipsticks I have uh, a few more which uh, hold smaller amounts of lipsticks but this is mainly when I keep most of my uh, Urban Decay lipsticks I have a very large Urban Decay lipstick collection because a few years ago when they released the Vice lipsticks I bought a bunch of them I figured out that I love the formula and it works really well for me which is why I have a bunch of them I also have a number of Pat McGrath so let's just go through them one by one so let's start with this little compartment here it holds two lonely lipsticks. The first one I want to show you is this one from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It is the only lipstick that I have kept from ABH because it is a really gorgeous color and I have nothing else quite like it. This is the color Latte, which is a beautiful nude shade on me. It is somewhat deeper, so it's not like a nude nude, but it's a really beautiful dark nude, which leans neutral cool, I would say. So it's a really gorgeous lipstick and I love it and I have kept it because I love the color. Then we have a really, really old, this might be my ev first ever Urban Decay lipstick. This is the shade Rapture and it is a, I want to say like a mauve purple neutral. It's a beautiful formula, it's creamy, the lipstick is still fine. I see some blooming over here of some of the oils, don't worry, it's not mold or anything dangerous. It's just a little bit of wax blooming because the lipstick has been through a lot of temperature changes, especially during the summer here when it gets really really hot. Another lipstick that is very old, the, as you can see these two still come in the old Revolution packaging. Um, this one is in a cream formula, this one is in their what came to be the Comfort Matte formula. This lipstick in particular is one of the most stunning reds that I have in my collection. It is a gorgeous like warm toned red with somewhat subdued tones to it. I really really love this lipstick. It's a very flattering color. It's not a very like in your face kind of red and it has a little bit of warmth to it. I really really like it. This is one of the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani lipsticks. I did actually have a bunch of them but I decluttered some. Well I had three and I decluttered one of them. The color 714 because it was a really dry uh, formula. It wasn't their Mega Matte formula. But I did keep this one which is the shade Firebird which is a gorgeous gorgeous like fuchsia with a bit of a like bluish duochrome to it. It's a very very creamy formula as you can see and I've used quite a bunch of it because I'm almost down to the Urban Decay logo. It's a very special color. Next in this little compartment we have one of my absolute favorite Urban Decay lipsticks as you can also see from how much I have worn it out. This is also another lipstick which comes in their cream formula. This is the shade Wonderland. It was also part of the Gwen Stefani collection, but it, you can also find Firebird and um, Wonderland in their regular lineup right now. This is a beautiful, like, pink leaning red. It is one of my favorite reds from them. I love the formula, I love the finish, I love everything about this lipstick. Honestly, if I ever ran out of it, I would probably run out and get it again. Shall we just do all of my Urban Decay lipsticks before we move into the rest of what's going on here? And let's just start with this little compartment here. Um, I just wanted to show you, in case you were wondering how I'm storing my lipsticks, I've cut up the boxes of all of the lipsticks here on the top, and I just um, taped them all together to use them as holders for the actual lipsticks. Starting off with this one, this is the shade Disobedient, which is also in their cream formula, and it is a very warm, leaning pink shade. It's really, really beautiful. I really love this pink shade because it's not too Barbie pink. It doesn't lean too cool. It's just a beautiful, like, neutral, warm pink, and I really love this color. Next we have one of their cooler leaning pinks and this is the shade Backtalk. This one is in their Comfort Matte formula and as you can see this one is a much more cool nude leaning pink. I really like this lipstick especially when I do some of more cooler toned 
looks this goes really really well with those then we have the shade checkmate which is a very pink leaning coral it's also in their comfort matte formula i'm gonna be honest i don't really use this lipstick all that often and I don't really know why, because it is a really beautiful shade of pink. The next one is a color that I reach for all the time. And as you will see from how much I have already worn out from it, because I'm also down to the Urban Decay logo, this is the shade Bittersweet, and it is the most gorgeous purple. It has a beautiful, opaque, creamy texture to it. It's very comfortable and plush on the lips. I absolutely love this lipstick. I feel like if you're afraid of wearing purple lipstick, something like Bittersweet is probably the perfect solution because it has just enough purple to make it feel like you're wearing a purple lipstick, but it also has enough other undertones to make it very wearable. These have absolutely no rhyme or reason when it comes to the uh, colors, so you're going to see a bunch of like different sort of undertones um, popping up. So now we're talking about the color Gash. It's a beautiful, very deep wine toned red. Really, really gorgeous. Also in their cream formula. I really love this color. It's especially beautiful to wear during the fall and winter months, which reminds me that I need to bust it out because it's been a while since I've worn Gash. It's such a gorgeous color. Next up we have one of my absolute favorite lipsticks from Urban Decay. This also comes in the most gorgeous packaging because it was part of their Basquiat limited edition collection a few years ago. I'm sad to say this color is actually not part of their regular lineup as of now, which makes me really sad because the color is stunning. It's this gorgeous like camel brown nude with a bit of like terracotta tones to it. This is the shade Epigram. It's also in their cream formula. I freaking love this lipstick. I don't really have anything else that's quite like it. I love the formula, I love the tone of this lipstick and I would be extremely sad if I ever run out of it. Luckily that's not going to happen anytime soon but when it does I'm gonna be really sad. Next up we have the color 1993 which is a classic from Urban Decay. It's a brown, it's like a nude brown shade and as you can see it doesn't really lean too warm or too cool, it's just the perfect neutral middle. Oh, next we have one of my absolute favorite Urban Decay lipsticks. This is the most beautiful, like, rosy nude. This is the shade Ravenswood, it's in their cream formula. And you can bet if I finish this lipstick, I'm immediately running to the first Urban Decay counter to buy a replacement because I love this color. It is so easy to wear. This is one of my absolute favorite lipsticks ever. Next up we have a very like purple leaning mauve. This is the shade Crisis, which is another one of my favorites from Urban Decay, also in their cream formula. Gorgeous color, like I said, a little bit more on the mauve purple side compared to Ravenswood, but very much in the same line. Next we have a color that I initially didn't really get along with very well. However, I kept it because it is a really stunning color. It's like a very wine toned purple and it applies a little bit patchy however since I started using the MAC lip primer I haven't had any issues with this lipstick and I absolutely adore it because it has the most beautiful tones to it this is Mosh Pit next we have another one of the Basquiat lipsticks this one is in the shade Abstract and again gorgeous packaging and it is another one of those like very yellow leaning taupe nudes this is the only shade in this undertone that I have kept because of the few lipsticks that I have had over the years in those undertones. I feel like this is the only one that looks flattering on me. Next up we have the color Hitchhike, which is in their Comfort Matte formula and it is a stunning terracotta kind of shade. I don't really know how else to describe it. It's like a terracotta nude red. It is so incredibly stunning. This is one of the most gorgeous Urban Decay lipsticks ever. Next up we have the shade Conspiracy and this one is a fun one. It's in their metalized formula and it has a very like eggplant base with a golden shift to it. It is such a unique, stunning and interesting color. I really really enjoy wearing this lipstick. It's not one that you can pull out on very many occasions but when you can it's a very gorgeous lipstick. Next we have oh, another one of my favorites. This is from the uh, Alice in Wonderland collection a few years ago, the Alice Through the Looking Glass. And this is the shade Erasabeth. Erasabeth is stunning, absolutely beautiful. It is very reminiscent of the shade Wonderland, which I mentioned in the beginning of the video as being one of my favorites. But it is in a comfort matte formula and it's just 
a little bit more red, I feel like. Wonderland still has a bit more pink in it, whereas this one leans just a little bit more red, but still on the pink side. An absolutely stunning color and formula. We have a really fun shade. This is the shade Psycho. Oh, another one of my favorites. This is, again, a very pink leaning red, but it has blue glitters in it. It's their Comfort Matte formula. Oh my goodness, I love this lipstick so very much. These blue sparklies are just, I don't know whether you can see them, they're just so cool and so interesting. Now I'm moving into this compartment here, and the first shade I'm pulling out is a really fun one. This is the shade Hideaway. Hideaway is actually very similar to this one here, the shade Back Talk, but I feel like the two lipsticks were different enough for me to keep both of them, because this one has, I feel like, cooler nude tones to it compared to this one. This one still leans a little bit more pink, and I love both of these colors so much, so I can't get rid of either of them. We have another limited edition Urban Decay lipstick. This is from the uh, Kristen Leanne collection, and this is the shade Cloud 9, which is probably one of the better purples that I have seen out there. Purple is a very difficult lipstick to get right in a formula, and this is probably one of the better purples that I have seen out there. It is a cooler leaning purple, so it's definitely a more adventurous shade and one that I don't really reach for every day. But when I want a nice, reliable purple, I am going to reach for this lipstick. Alright, another um, themed collection lipstick here. This is from the Cherry collection a few years ago. This is the shade Juicy, which is a beautiful... I think it's also in their metalized finish. Yes, it's in their metalized finish and it's a gorgeous nude infused with golden and pink sparkles. Can you see that? It is so beautiful on the lips. You can wear it on its own, you can wear it over top of other lipsticks, which is what I often choose for. And honestly, I really love this lipstick. I wear it all the time. Okay, another one that comes in a limited edition packaging. This was in their Nocturnal collection, which I don't even remember anymore. It was quite a few years back. As you can see, a beautiful burgundy purpley sort of shade with a beautiful sparkly finish to it. Very similar to Mosh Pit, but not quite as saturated. Oh, next we have another one of my favorites. I'm going to keep saying that, you guys, because I have a lot of favorites within these lipstick. lipsticks. This is the shade 69, which is a gorgeous, vibrant, pinky red. The formula of this lipstick is outstanding, the color is so much fun. You're going to see a lot of red in my collection because I really like to wear red lipsticks. Um, I could never part with 69 because I absolutely love it. It is very similar to Erasabeth now I see, but this comes in a cream formula, this one is a more matte formula, so you know, different enough for me to keep everything. Next we have another burgundy wine sort of red. This is the color Rocksteady, which was part of the... Gwen Stefani collection. I think it was Rocksteady. Again, I bought it at a later point, which is why I don't have it in the Gwen Stefani packaging. It is a gorgeous, deep, burgundy wine sort of red. Very different from Gash, as you can see. I hope it's coming across on camera. They're very similar, but still have somewhat different tones to them, which is why I have kept both of them. Next we have another really fun color that comes from a collection a few years ago. This was from the Naked Heat collection, and this is the shade Scorched, which is another one of their metalized duochrome lipsticks. This is a brown with a gold duochrome. It is such a fun shade, especially to wear in the summer with a nice bronzy look. Super gorgeous. Then we have the shade Fuel, which is a peachy nude, also part of the Naked Heat collection a few years ago. It is a classic peachy nude. It is such a gorgeous color. I really love this lipstick. Oh my goodness, this is one of my absolute favorite reds in my collection. This is the shade Notel Motel, which leans a little bit warmer when I compare it to like a classic red, something like uh, Velvet Ribbon from Lisa Eldridge. It is a warmer red, but it is what I considered to be my classic red before I got the color from Lisa. It is such a stunning lipstick. So beautiful, so creamy, so comfortable, so long-wearing. Notel Motel has to be one of my favorite lipsticks in my whole collection. Next we have one of the few like mega mattes that I have kept, maybe even the only mega matte that I have kept. This comes in their super matte formula. This is the color Alpha, which is a really interesting petal pink. It is very similar to this shade here, the, um, the shade Psycho, which has the blue sparkle in it, but it is somewhat deeper and it doesn't have the blue sparkle, which is why I have kept it around, because 
I remember this lipstick not being super uncomfortable even though it's in their Mega Matte formula and trust me I despise super matte and super drying lipsticks so if I have kept this one it was not too bad next we have the shade Zealot which is a metalized it is also a red with golden sparkles I absolutely love this lipstick it's again a more warmer leaning red and I really really love it I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself like a broken record here, but like I said, I've already gone through my collection before and I've already made choices what to keep and what to uh, get rid of and everything that I've kept here is lipsticks that I absolutely love and I don't want to really live without. Oh, this one is a really fun one. This, can you even see like this how gorgeous that is? That is the shade Big Bang which comes in their metalized finish and it is a Barbie pink infused with pink glitter. That is just such a fun lipstick. When the occasion calls for looking like a glitter Barbie, this is the lipstick that I'm going to go for. Next we have another really fun color. This is the shade Anarchy, which is one of my favorite like hot magenta pinks in my collection. I absolutely love this lipstick. It is a cooler leaning pink and I think I um, pull off these sort of colors really well. Ooh, what do we have here? This is a really special one, you guys. This was a present from my friend Amber. I don't know if you remember Amber from Makeup is My Art from back in the days when I was posting a lot of indie makeup content. She sent me this lipstick because it was not available in Europe and I really wanted to have it. It is in this gorgeous limited edition packaging. I don't know whether you will be able to tell. This is just so stunning. And it is actually a really beautiful color. It's a very deep eggplant purple. And I remember the finish and the wear of this to be really, really beautiful for being this sort of color. These sort of colors are really difficult to nail, but I remember this lipstick being relatively easy to wear. Ooh, this is a really fun one as well. This is the shade Cruel, which is also in their metalized formula, which is a very interesting neutral sort of wine red with red sparkles in it. Look how fun that is. It's not a very in-your-face sort of red, it's, it has like very muted um, neutral tones to it and those sparkles just make it a little bit more interesting. It is such an interesting shade to wear, especially if you're afraid of being super adventurous with your lipsticks but you want something a little bit more fun and more sparkly. I think Cruel is a gorgeous shade. Oh my goodness, another favorite. This is Bad Blood, which comes in their Comfort Matte formula and it is the most beautiful, deeper, like brown leaning red. And by the way, this lipstick is about 100% dupe of Elson from Pat McGrath. I was on the verge of buying Elson and then one of my friends at work actually has the lipstick. So I borrowed it, I swatched it, I actually swatched this one on the top of my lip and Elson on the bottom of my lip and I couldn't tell the difference. This is how similar they were. So if you're looking for the dupe from Elson, Bad Blood from Urban Decay is your girl. She's gorgeous. Oh, this is a classic from Urban Decay. This is the shade After Dark, which is a gorgeous purple with a blue shift to it, like blue, blue sparkles. I remember this lipstick being all the rage a few years ago. Everyone had After Dark in their collection. I haven't actually worn this lipstick in a really long time, but I remember really enjoying it, so I should actually pull it out a bit more often. Well, the next one is a really fun summer shade. This is the color Twist, which is a gorgeous pinky coral. I wouldn't really know how else to describe it. It's a pinky coral. Look how fun and gorgeous that is. In the summer, absolutely stunning. Oh, here we have another one of my favorites. This is the shade Manic, which comes in their cream formula, and it is such a beautiful, subdued, like, rosy red. On the lips, it pulls a little bit more red than it does on my uh, skin here, but it is like the most beautiful, like, muted red that's so beautiful, so comfortable, such a gorgeous color. Another one that just stays forever on your lips and it just feels so comfortable. Alright, this is the color Easy, which is in their cream formula, and it is a more of a orange leaning coral. It is again a very, very bright shade, but it definitely has like very fiery orange undertones to it. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but we actually swatched all of my Urban Decay lipsticks. Let's just quickly tackle these guys over here. The very few liquid lipsticks that I have kept in my collection. These two are from Sugar Pill. And these are the shades Strange Love, which was part of their, I don't know, Valentine's collection a few years ago. Really stunning color. I can't, I don't have the heart to get rid of it because it is such a beautiful, deep, 
like brown red with red sparkles in it. It is so so be beautiful. I never wear it anymore but I don't have the heart to get rid of it so I should just make a point to wear it. And this is another one that was limited edition. I think this is the shade Pumpkin Spice which is a beautiful like pumpkin orange with golden sparkles in it. Neither of these has gone bad. They are both really really beautiful and like I said I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Okay, one that I'm going to get rid of is this one from Jeffree Star. This is the shade Dull Part. I have gotten rid of a bunch of uh, Jeffree lipsticks uh, over the years. Some of them dried out, some of them stank really bad, so I couldn't really stand them anymore. Uh, this one I'm going to get rid of because I don't know whether you can tell, but it's extremely dry. I remember really enjoying this shade. And please bear in mind, I bought all of these lipsticks uh, back when Jeffree started and he wasn't such a controversial figure. I haven't really had the desire to buy anything else from him since then, but I have some things that I have kept because I don't like to be a wasteful person. This one I'm going to toss because it has dried out. One that I'm going to keep forever and ever until it actually goes bad or dries out is this one. This is the shade Pumpkin Pie. It is so incredibly stunning and I would be forever grateful if any of you can suggest a dupe for this lipstick, especially if it comes in a bullet form. This is the most beautiful deep pumpkin orange color and when it dries down, I don't know whether you can see in here, it has the most beautiful pink glitter in it. You can't see it right now because it's wet, but when it dries down and you smack your lips together, you get the most beautiful pink glitter over top of that gorgeous pumpkin shade. Let's move into this little compartment here, which holds a couple of my uh, higher-end lipsticks. Let's start with my Sukyo ones here. This is the uh, Sukyo Moisture Rich Lipstick in the shade 01, which is a beautiful peachy nude. This Suku lipsticks are, have such an incredibly gorgeous and comfortable formula to them. If you like your cream lipsticks, this is probably one of the most, you know, classy formulas that I have tried out there. This one has a little bit of a uh, golden sparkle to it. And the other one, which is part of their... What's this one again? Extra Glow. It's actually a very similar color, only without the sparkle in it. The only reason I have both is because when I was buying them, I thought that they would be different enough from each other. As it turns out, when they say 01, they really pretty much mean the same color. So, I use these lipsticks for different purposes. I use this one mostly over top of other lipsticks to make them a little bit creamier. And I like to use this one on its own because of the sparklies. I have two of the Lip Fetish Balms from Pat McGrath. One of them is in the shade Dark Devotion, which is a very beautiful berry shade. This one is kind of sheer, I'm gonna be honest. It's not my favorite. I prefer the other shade that I have much more. The other shade is the color Flesh 6. This shade was the first one that I ever bought from the Flesh line and I fell in love with the undertones of them because they have the most beautiful like terracotta red brown tones to them. Um, and I really like this lip balm. It is such a gorgeous, gorgeous formula and color. Okay, let's do the Pat McGrath ones and then we're going to come back to the Natasha Denona one. Um, next we have this one, which I have spoken about so very many times. This is the shade Blood Rush, which is from her Blitztrans uh, lipstick formula. This is a gorgeous, bright, fiery red with a golden sparkle infused into it. It is such a gorgeous lipstick. Then we have the darkest shade that I own from Pat McGrath, which is the shade Exotica which is from her Lux Trans formula. It is again one of those very deep eggplant purples. A very, very beautiful formula. The uh, color is great. It's one of the few vampy colors that I have left in my collection because I don't really wear dark lipstick very often, but when I do I want it to be a reliable color that I don't have to fuck around with too much. And Exotic is one of them, not gonna lie. This is the color Obsessed from her Matte Trans line, which is sort of like a very orange leaning red orange coral leaning red as you can see not a color for the faint of heart but really really stunning and very plush on the lips the next two shades are some of my favorites from Pat McGrath this one is McGrath Muse which used to be another one of my more classic reds but it is a warmer leaning red it is in her Lux Trans formula and it is such a gorgeous stunning red shade the next one happens to be another one of those very bright fuchsia purpley pink shades. This is the shade Pink Ultra Ness. I could not live without this lipstick because it has an amazing formula, an amazing color, and it is just, it has my heart. I love this shade so very much. 
it is a little bit deeper compared to Anarchy and I feel like that makes it a little bit more muted, um, less in your face and somehow more approachable compared to something like Anarchy. This is the shade Anarchy and this is the shade Pink Ultraness. You can see they're kind of in the same family, but Pink Ultraness is just so much more muted and somehow deeper. The last two are my only sort of like nude colors uh, from Pat McGrath. This is the shade Donatella, which is... I want to say a little bit too nude for my taste, but I can still pull it off. You can see it's a little bit of like a taupe leaning nude. Uh, and those are definitely not among my favorites, so something like this I like to wear with the Suku lipstick to give it a little bit more warmth. And last but not least in my Pat McGrath collection uh, here we have the color She's Heaven, which is in her Lux Trans formula. This is one of my favorite lipsticks, especially one of my favorite nudes, because it's not too deep, it's not too light, it's just the perfect amount of nude for me and it doesn't lean too cool or too warm. It is absolutely beautiful. Since we're talking about nudes, let's finish off with Natasha Denona I Need Nude in the shade Noah, which is definitely a more cool leaning nude. So here you can see how much cooler leaning um, Noah is compared to something like She's Heaven. She's Heaven has somewhat rosier tones to it and that makes it a little bit more flattering on me, but I really still like to wear Noah quite a bit. Alright you guys, this is the rest of my lipstick collection, so we're just going to go through each of these compartments. Let me move these two on the side and let's start with this one. So in here I have my four Narsodacious lipsticks as well as my boys from Tom Ford. Let's start with the Tom Ford ones. They were some of my first like more higher end lipsticks. I've bought those a few years ago. I've heard that these can go bad really quickly so I'm actually really really hoping that doesn't happen because I don't actually use them that often. This is the shade Ben which is a gorgeous brown nude. One thing I'm gonna say about the Tom Ford uh, lipstick formula, these are nice, the packaging is really beautiful, but to me the lipsticks from Pat McGrath for instance, which are about the same price point, are a bit more special both in terms of their packaging and in terms of their formula, like something like the matte trans formula is something so new and interesting and different. Whereas these are expensive, they are a good formula, but they are nothing that we have never seen before. So I wouldn't really call these super worth the hype. This is the next color that I have. This is a very special one in my collection. This is the shade Ryan and it was a present from my brother and his girlfriend. They chose this color for me so so well because it's a beautiful light plum with a bit of a sheen to it. It's very comfortable. It's more like a cream uh, formula and I really enjoy this lipstick because it's a very easy one to wear. And the last color and the first one that I actually bought for myself was the shade Dylan, which is a gorgeous red. Please don't judge me for the amounts of red I have in my collection. Red is like my nude. I like wearing red lipstick. I do wear red lipstick uh, a lot. This is a bit of a warmer leaning classic red. It's a beautiful formula. Like I said, nothing to really write home about, but good enough for me to really enjoy this lipstick. And then we move on to my NARS Audacious lipsticks. I actually feel like the packaging on these is like a tad more special to me than the ones from Tom Ford because it is very sleek, uh, it has this beautiful black design on it and then you have the NARS logo here and the closure is magnetic which is so fucking satisfying to me. This is the shade Deborah, this is the newest uh, one in my collection. The formula of the NARS Audacious lipsticks is very interesting because it's not a cream but it's also not a matte. It's a very interesting satin formula which sits very beautifully and comfortably on the lips. For whatever reason these tend to wear off a bit easier around the center of my lips. Nothing that my lip primer can't fix. This color in particular is a gorgeous warm chocolate brown. Now if you compare something like Deborah to something like the shade from Tom Ford, the shade from Tom Ford leans um, neutral, almost cooler, whereas this is a real warm chocolate brown and I adore it for that. Then we have a really fun summer shade. This is the shade Kelly, which is a gorgeous coral. The next one has to be one of my absolute favorites from the four lipsticks that I have and that is the shade Audrey. Audrey is such a beautiful like plum wine shade. Gorgeous formula, gorgeous color. Honestly, I don't really think I have anything else that's quite like Audrey in my collection and I cherish this lipstick for its uh, color and its formula. And last but not least, in my Audacious line I have the shade Anita. 
Sorry guys, I'm doing a really bad <laughs> job here with the swatches. These two kind of like merged into each other. And it is a beautiful uh, pinky nude. I don't really know that if there's anything more to say about it. It's a very easy color to wear. A very easy color to pair with a variety of looks. Just overall a very beautiful lipstick. Alright, in this compartment I keep my H&M Green lipsticks, my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and the only two Colourpop lipsticks that I have. So let's start with the two Colourpop lipsticks. This is the shade Still Crazy. I don't quite recall the name of their cream for formula, but these are the cream formula, not their matte formula. Still Crazy is another um, pinky nude. Let's watch it underneath Anita because I'm actually curious how similar they are. This is just a tad deeper compared to Anita. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the uh, Colourpop lipstick formula is actually pretty outstanding for the price point. They sit beautifully on the lips, they're very pigmented, they're very opaque, they're very comfortable to wear. Oh, this one has to be one of my absolute favorite lipsticks in my whole collection because it's such a unique shade. This is the shade Ghosted, which unfortunately my camera always turns into a completely different color. But it's a beautiful rosy nude. It's beautiful on the lips. It's such a stunning and unique color. Unfortunately, this lipstick has been discontinued. Then we have my two prized possessions, my uh, Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. This one is in the shade Velvet Dragon. I don't want to repeat myself because I've made a separate video uh, about this lipstick, but the packaging is stunning. Stunning, so well designed. The formula is absolutely outstanding and I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see the classic velvety structure enveloping the actual bullet. Like the actual bullet looks like it is made of velvet. It is so stunning. This color in particular has to be one of the most unique lipstick shades that I have in my collection because it is a beautiful like warmer leaning red but with yellow tones to it. It has a little bit of like that mutedness and oh I just this is such a stunning lipstick. However the color from Lisa that really has my heart is this one. This is the most beautiful classic red I have ever seen. I don't really have a color quite like this in my collection. This is the shade Velvet Ribbon. Oh my goodness what a stunner. What I really like about the formula of this lipstick is that it is, the color Dragon is slightly drier on my lips, whereas Dragon is just the perfect amount of matte. It has slip to it, um, it has a very long lasting power, but at the same time it's not super drying and it is the most beautiful classic, like slightly blue leaning red. I cannot recommend this lipstick enough if you're looking for a higher end classic red. Moving on into my beloved H&M Cream Lipstick collection. Uh, I have made a separate video on my H&M Cream Lipsticks. I'm going to link that uh, somewhere for you so that, so that you can also see it with lip swatches and everything. I think these lipsticks are so freaking underrated on YouTube because if you put a blindfold on me and you didn't let me see which uh, brand makes these lipsticks and I just was allowed to put them on my lips and like wear them all day, I would have guessed that these are high-end lipsticks because they are so special to me. They are so beautiful, rich, plush, creamy on your lipstick. Of course they are a cream lipstick formula so they are not going to last the longest on your lips but honestly to me it's worth it because of the comfort factor. I just like my lipsticks to be fucking comfortable. Alright, this is the shade Wellis and Tweed which happens to be one of my favorite peachy nudes because it has the most beautiful neutral tones to it. I really love this lipstick. The next one has to be Mariam in a bullet. If we could describe me in a lipstick and we would call this lipstick a Mariam color, this is it. This is the shade Cinnamon Toast and I adore everything about this lipstick. From the cinnamon color to the finish of it to all the undertones that are in here, it is just so delicious. I adore this lipstick. Now we go into a couple of colors that are actually very similar to each other and I should probably like declutter some of them eventually. This is the shade Charmed Life, which is a slightly deeper version of Wellis and Tweed. This is the shade Heyday. This one's pretty much in the same color family as uh, Wellis and Tweed and Charmed Life, but 
Honestly, these two, like swatched on my arm, you can barely see the difference and I should probably declutter one of them because they look so similar to each other. But I haven't had enough um, time to make up my mind to which of the two is my favorite. Next we have the shade Sienna Piazza, which is one of the shades that I bought this year. Sienna Piazza is a gorgeous like coral nude. I wouldn't really know how else to describe it. It has a bit of those coral tones to it, but without being too much in your face. The next one I have is the shade Brunette Ambition, which is more of a mauve pink leaning nude another one of my absolute favorites look how beautiful that is another shade that just goes with everything and is so comfortable to wear all right this one is my favorite this is the shade rosewood and if i ever ran out of this lipstick i would be incredibly sad because i have nothing with quite those undertones and in this formula it is just the most beautiful neutral terracotta pinky nude. It just flatters my skin tone so much. It looks so beautiful. It kind of like lightens my complexion. And last but not least, we have a beautiful chocolate color. This is the shade Chocolate Shod, which is a bit in the same color family as Ben from uh, Tom Ford. But of course it has a cream finish to it. And what I actually like to do is because Ben is a little bit of a drier formula, I like to wear these two together. And last but not least, we have this uh, compartment, which is a little bit of a mixed bag, because it holds my MAC lipsticks, a couple of my minis from Pat McGrath, my Lip Divinyl, one Bessemer lipstick, one YSL lipstick, one y and one Kiko lipstick. This one is really, like, all over the place. So let's start with the MAC lipsticks. This is a very special lipstick to me. This is the MAC Viva Glam in collaboration with Sia. I adore Sia as an artist, as a human, and I really enjoy her lipstick as well. It is a beautiful, like, warmer leaning red in a somewhat matte, matte formula. And yes, it's probably very similar to something like uh, Dylan from Tom Ford, but like I said, don't judge me when it comes to red lipsticks. I love my red lipsticks. Here we have another nude. This is Modesty, which is a cream sheen. I didn't really buy this lipstick myself. It came with an order a while back, just like a little present from MAC. And I ended up falling in love with this lipstick because it is such a gorgeous nude. You can see it's it's like a neutral nude. It just goes with everything. It's super comfortable on the lips because it's in their cream sheen formula. And I ended up falling in love with this lipstick. So apparently MAC really knows what I enjoy in a lipstick. The next one has to be one of my favorite lipsticks that I have from MAC and this is the one that I wanted to mention uh, as a comparison to the shade from uh, Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Chili, which I would describe as like a pumpkin orange red. And I don't know whether you can see how much deeper and more red Chili leans compared to the shade from Lisa Eldridge. You can see how the shade from Lisa has like a little bit of mutedness and a little bit more yellow to it, whereas this one is more of like a true pumpkin orange red. Alrighty, let's watch these little guys over here. This is from a limited edition uh, mini set from Pat McGrath from Holidays last year. The first one here is another very classic Mariam color. This is the shade Flash 3. At the risk of repeating myself, I adore the undertones of the lipstick, like the lip products in the whole flash line, and Flash 3 is just such a stunning and beautiful color. Honestly, as soon as I run out of it, I am going to get myself a full size of this lipstick because I really, really enjoy it. The next one is another one that I really enjoy. This is the shade Beautiful Creature, which um, I always, always mix up with the name of this one, which is Christy, and whenever I do videos, I always call this one Christy, when in fact it's Beautiful Creature. This one is such a beautiful, like, lighter peachy nude. You can definitely tell that there is a little bit of, like, warm pink coral undertones to this lipstick. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and compared to something like Christy, for example, which is very much in the tones of this shade, the shade Beautiful Creature, but just a bit more nude. Oh, I prefer Beautiful Creature a bit more because it has those slightly warmer tones to it. See, Christy leans a little bit more nude and a bit cooler toned, and I really prefer something like Beautiful Creature so much more. And last but not least, here from Pat McGrath, we have one of her uh, newest lip formulas. This is the Lip Divinyl formula. These are absolutely beautiful. If you like your cream, shiny lipsticks, you are going to love this formula. I have the shade Temptress, which is a muted, wine-toned red. Really beautiful on the lips. Really comfortable. Oh my goodness, I cannot say enough good things about this formula. 
it is more pigmented than a lip balm so if you are thinking that this is similar to tinted lip balms let me tell you this is much more pigmented than a tinted lip balm especially when you compare it to something like the uh, lip fetish balms I have the lip fetish balms this is definitely more pigmented than those then we have here a random besame lipstick this one is in the shade red velvet let me tell you, I didn't really care much for these Besame lipsticks. This one was a letdown for me, a real disappointment. I had to pay so much money for it that in, in the end of the day, I think I paid for it a very similar amount of money to what I pay for Elisa Eldridge lipsticks. And when I hold these lipsticks together, this feels like a classy, beautiful, well thought out of lipstick in every possible way from the packaging to the actual formula, whereas this feels like... I don't know, something that you would find in a drugstore, quite honestly. The um, uh, packaging is extremely light and it does not feel hefty in your hands at all. Definitely not something uh, reflected in the price tag because these are quite expensive. When it comes to the actual formula, it is a nice formula. This is a somewhat deeper berry red shade. But to me this formula is nothing too special. Nothing that I would consider so incredibly unique that I would run back and get more. Then we have a really, really special lipstick. This is um, the only YSL lipstick that I have in my collection. It is from their uh, Rouge Per Couture line. I don't know, is that how it's called? It's in the shade 74. Very romantic. But it is such a fun and beautiful color. This is yet again a present from my brother and his girlfriend. I have no idea how they pulled it off, but they managed to give me a lipstick that I do not have in my collection and I think is so incredibly unique. Such a beautiful formula, such a fun color, especially for the summer. I absolutely love this lipstick, needless to say. And the last lipstick in my collection, oh my goodness, I can't believe we have actually made it until the end, is one of the uh, Kiko Gossamer lipsticks. This one is in the shade 07. Frankly, if I compare even this to this, this has more heft and is more interesting compared to this one. I'm just so disappointed by this one. So the uh, Kiko lipsticks open in a very interesting way, so we have to push this little button here and then the lipstick comes out. And the shade 107 is just a beautiful pinky nude. Is it not something that I have in my collection? Probably is, but honestly I really enjoy it. And so we have come to the end of this lipstick collection, you guys. The only lipstick that I am decluttering is this one from Jeffree Star because it has dried out and I honestly never use it or had any plans to use it. Hope you enjoyed the video. The next collection video I'm going to do is for my lip glosses. Thank goodness I have much less lip glosses in my collection, so it's not going to be as long as this video. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!